Good morning. It's a joy to have you with us today on Transform by Truth. I'd like to just read a passage of scripture from the Psalms to give you some thoughts for the day, to give you something to meditate on, and hopefully to encourage your soul. If you have a copy of a Bible with you, I encourage you to turn to Psalm chapter number 42. Psalm 42. And we're going to read one of the Psalms of David. And this has often been defined and described as a psalm where he was trying to encourage his own heart. We don't know all the specifics of what he was going through or what he was facing in life, but it is evident from this that he was really struggling. And he was now trying to seek and find the God of his salvation. And yet he felt like he was abandoned and all alone. And so let's read this passage together, and I just want to share a few thoughts with you and again focus you on the importance of being seekers of God. Psalm 42 and verse number 1 says, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remembered these things, I poured out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of joy and praise, with a multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O my God, my soul is cast down within me. We'll stop right there at the reading, but I want us to think on the words that we just heard the psalmist speak. We hear the pain in his voice. We hear the discouragement of his own heart. And we also note the pursuit. He is seeking after God. You'll note in the very first verse that he likens his pursuit of that of a deer pursuing water. This deer is being chased, maybe by hunters or another predator. And it is getting tired. It is thirsty. It is needing rest. And David here says that I'm like that deer that is longing after the water brooks, longing for some rest of my soul, longing for relief from the trials and tribulations that I'm facing. No doubt you've been at that same place in your life many times where you're just worn out. You're stressed. You just want to break from it all. You want something to refresh you, but it's as if you cannot find it. Here David is expressing this, that my longing and my refreshment is found in God. But although I'm looking for him and I'm searching for him, it seems as if he is not found. Note what he said in verse 2. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He had a spiritual need. There was something that he was seeking inwardly. He wasn't asking for physical possessions. He wasn't asking for physical relief. He said, what I need is a spiritual reviving, a spiritual refreshing within. When is that going to happen? When am I going to be able to stand before God and hear His Word and hear His promises and receive His truths so that my soul may be lifted up and no longer in despair? Again, there are times in our life where we may pick up the Bible and read it. We may go to church and sit there and listen to a sermon and sing the songs and do the religious activity, and we still walk away not spiritually refreshed, not revived within us. David was doing all of those things. No doubt he was still singing the songs of praise. He was reading the things that he had recorded that God had given him. And we even note there in verse number four, he said, I went to the house of God. 
I followed the multitudes there. We sang songs. We praised God's name. We heard the Word of God repeat, uh, read and illustrated and the application of it all. But I walked out of the church house. I walked out of the place of worship still not fulfilled. There are many people today that are faithful to church. They're faithful to their religion. They go and they do the religious duties and they follow the religious rules and, and all the things that it offers, and yet they still are thirsting after a real relationship with God. They still have this drive within them that I need to know truth that will set me free, that will transform me, that will help me, and I don't know when I will get that. I can't seem to find it as much as I look for it. This is what the psalmist David is expressing. And then he uses words that show how discouraged and depressed he is. Now you'll note that he doesn't really address it to God. He's more addressing it to himself. There in verse number five, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why are you so discouraged? Why are you so upset? Then he says, why art thou disquieted in me? Now later on in this chapter, he repeats it again in verse number 11. He's asking himself these questions. Why am I discouraged? Why am I depressed? Why am I losing hope? What's going on in my life? What's going on in my heart? I can't figure it all out. Now he did have the right answer. He said, hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. My eyes are going to be fixed upon God. My heart is going to wait upon God. I'm not going to abandon the truth of God just because I'm discouraged or just because I'm frustrated. I'm still going to hope in Him. And sometimes that's the only thing we can do in the difficulties and the trials of our life is hold hope in God. Hold hope in His Word not abandon our faith in the Word of God. We may feel like we're in a wilderness. We may feel like we're all alone. But if we keep our faith and our hope in God, then notice what he says. For I shall yet praise Him for the help of His countenance. David is looking down the road. He's saying, right now, I don't have what I need. I'm like a deer thirsting after truth. I'm like a deer longing for rest from all of the problems and all of the pursuits of my life. But I'm going to keep my eyes on God. And I know this, that God will help me. I know there is coming a time where God will answer my prayer, where God will deliver me from my trial. This is also brought out in the book of Hebrews chapter number 12 where it talks about our life being a race, that we are to be encouraged by those that have gone before us, and we are to run our race with patience, that we have weights and we have pressures and we have difficulties. But then the key of it all is this, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. If our hope is in Christ, He is the one that has given us the stamina, given us the resolve, given us the path in which we're to run. That path is not always easy. But did you note there, He is not just the author of our path. He is not just the director of our life, but He is the finisher. When we trust in God, no matter what we're going through, we will survive. We will come to the end of that road. We'll come to the end of our path, and we will see that God has been faithful. We, see, we will see that God has never forsaken us, that God has never abandoned us, God has never left us, but He has been that help and that resource all along. Now, David here, he's going through a problem. His heart is discouraged. His soul is cast down. But there's an interesting thing that he did. Is he said this in verse number 6, Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember thee. And the first thing that brought a memory of God to his attention is he says, I'm sitting there in the land of Jordan. I'm sitting upon the hills of Mizar. 
And he said, I'm observing creation. I'm seeing what God has created and I'm seeing the majesty of creation. And my heart now is lifted up to God. A wonderful way for us to be reminded of how powerful God is, how in tune God is, is through creation. A few months back, I was driving from the western side here to Suva. And it was in the middle of the night, and I stopped along the coast. And I got out, and I just looked up at the stars. I looked up at the heavens. And it was one of those nights where it was clear, and the stars and the planets seemed like you could just reach out and touch them. I saw the Milky Way and all the things that are out there in the heavens and in outer space. And I just laid there marveling at what God had created. And that night, I still remember it, of how God's power, God's presence, the wonder of God was so evident there in the heavens. And it caused me to remember the God of my salvation. The God who created all those things. The God who keeps the stars hung in space. The God who raises the sun in the morning and lowers it at night. The God who brings in the tide and brings it out. The God who keeps all things in consistent order is the same God that is observing me and watching me and knowing what I'm going through. He can know and he does know that my heart is discouraged, my soul is cast down, but he's not abandoned me. And He's not abandoned you. If your hope is in God, then God knows what you're going through. And like Jesus reminded us in the Gospel of Matthew, He said, consider the lilies of the field. Consider the birds, how they are fed every day. Then He asks the question, He says, are you not much better than the birds or the lilies of the field? He said, I'm the God that knows how many hairs you have on your head. I'm the God who knows what your need is. I'm the God who understands the the sorrow of your heart and the grief of your tribulation. I get it. I understand it. And I will help you. See, what God is looking for is two things. Number one, for us to pursue Him. To not give up. To not just fall down and say it's not worth it. But like that deer running from its pursuers, seeking after that cool, refreshing water, that spiritual life, that spiritual encouragement that only comes from God. We have to pursue God. But then also, we must hope in God. Never lose hope. Never lose hope in the promises of this book. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your paths. You may not be there yet, but there will be a day as you pursue God, as you trust in God, as you hope in God, there will be a day where you find the answer to your problem. You receive the solution to the trouble that's in your heart. Your soul one day will be revived and refreshed and you'll have that new burst of spiritual energy. You'll have that new focus in life because now instead of God just being a blur, instead of God being way out in the distance, there is that closeness again. There is that intimacy. There is that acknowledging that God is with me. And that is why God calls us to be seekers of Him to be pursuers of His truth. Now, I hope today that you have a relationship with God. The only way to have a relationship with your Creator is by coming to Him through Jesus Christ. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Today, you'll never find God unless you come to Him through Jesus. And that is by, first of all, recognizing that you need to be saved of your sins. That you've broken God's law, that you have been separated from God. But then also coming to understand that because God loves you, He has given you the answer. He has given you that hope. He has given you a Savior. And that is Jesus Christ. 
He died on the cross for you. He was buried and he rose again that third day so that we could have hope in God. I'm so glad that you joined me this morning. I hope this brief devotional thought will be a help to you throughout the day. Enjoy this day and may the Lord bless you.